What's up guys, Mike Iman here, your roofologist, coming at you from Plano, Texas today. And before we get started, I wanna say thanks for stopping by the channel, checking out this video. If you like what you see, definitely drop me a like and subscribe for more content. Now what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing a drone inspection of this particular property. As you can see behind me, it's very steep and ultimately that brings about a safety issue. Now, although we employ lots of safety gear and equipment to mitigate and obviously risk of fall, sometimes it's best to just break out the technology and drone it. So what we're gonna be doing is taking the footage that we take today and turning it over to one of our partners, Roofhawk, which is an AI firm that is gonna analyze the data and ultimately give me a report back that I can then give to my property owner and any relative insurance company to prove that there is in fact damage. Now, I, I'm currently using the Phantom 4 Pro, which has 4K capability, so there's definitely not an issue with the drone's ability to see or, or see in fine detail, but obviously with an AI firm, AI, artificial intelligence can obviously see things that might be missed by the naked eye or even the naked eye in with respect to a, uh, a picture. So what I'm gonna be doing is these guys have run tens of thousands of images through their program to basically learn what true, in, in fact, hail damage looks like. And ultimately we're gonna turn it over to them and tomorrow we're gonna be taking this information, taking it out to their data center and actually watching them do what they do. So without further ado, let's uh, jump in and start this thing up. All right, guys, so I just pulled into the NTT data center located here in Garland, Texas. Now, for security reasons, they've asked that I not shoot a video the outside of the building and really the majority of the inside. Obviously, we're going to be shooting in the area where we're going to be looking at those pictures and analyzing that information. But the reason for the high security, and when I say high security, I'm talking about this building is like Fort Knox. There's massive lot, razor wire everywhere, cameras everywhere, uh, bricks or metal stops that slide into the ground so the cars can't just pass through the gate and break through. Uh, the reason for this is because inside this building, housed inside the servers, is a massive, massive amount of sensitive information. And this information is personal information, government information, government contracts, defense, things like that, obviously the AI. And so obviously with that, with that level of information, you gotta be secure. So without further ado, let's jump in, get our badges, and see what this computer thinks about our hail damage. All right, guys, so we're inside here with Ryan Fontaine, the developer of Rufalk and the AI scientist. And so what we're going to do is basically analyze the images that I took uh, of, of that roof and see what it comes up with as far as hail damage. Like I said, that roof in particular was very steep. I mean, yes, we probably could have navigated with our safety gear, but like I said in my video, sometimes it's just air, better, best air on the side of caution. And in this particular case, it gives, gives us a great opportunity to really see what the AI comes up with. So Ryan, tell us what this is all about. Obviously, we got the, the screen cast on the TV back here. How does this work? You upload the images and then just does the thing or what? What you do is after you're done droning the roof, you pop out your memory card and you can put it inside any thing from your phone. We got a tablet over here or a computer and you go to our website and you can that AI and you can log in your portal from there. Really all you do is just plug this into your device and we'll run through the process real quick here. So we plug it into the laptop and we're going to switch over to the login. So you can log in to Rufalk and it immediately pops up with create a new report. You can also do download, edit, delete, there's a lot of different functions here. So for an address, we'll just do test. Hold on our brain, we'll do test drone. Email and this is all part of our internal CMS. We do Ryan at Ryan.com. I'm not sure if I can work that, but from there, and it's 555 Go to next. And this is where you start to create the report outside of the CMS. So you can create a new report, and this is you can upload the front of the house. Now, you don't have to, you can skip this step if you don't say have a front of the house photo. But if you do, you can upload here. So we can do that. Here's the front of the house that uh, Mike drove. And this is an overhead. Now, we don't have an overhead of this particular house, so we can just skip it. And this is where you upload all of your drone photos that you set for damage protection. So, really, you can select. So when you, when you told me uh, how, how to drone this, you gave a couple of instructions. Um, there's 15 feet away, there's an optimal 
you know, visibility, um, which I'm sure gives the landscape the view that you want, but also gives it a you know, perspective of uh, you kind of you kind of want to position a drone uh, really 15 maximum 20. It really depends on the resolution of the camera the drone that you're using, but you want to position it at the same high angle that a human can use. So when you're on a roof and you're looking, you're not looking necessarily straight down. You're not looking straight on. You're looking more at a 45 degree angle than a normal angle. So that's kind of what we want the drone to do as well. Now the drone can look straight down because it's much higher on the roof. So you can get the full eye view. The 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 phone we don't want people to do is take that straight out shot because just the way that the photos work is the very top of that And so you'll lose a lot of the ability to accurately detect just because of how the photo is taken. So really if you want to take it at an angle like pretend you're standing on the roof take it at that angle or straight down, you'll have real good results. But in keeping with that, if if, if uh, somebody were to be using the program and fly, let's say, within five feet, thinking that, you know, thinking that fundamentally, okay, well, my closer, the resolution is going to be better, what is your take on that? Like, is, there, is there too close? I mean, obviously, they're too far away, but is there too close? I would say that would be a little too close in school to the that the image the problem is you wouldn't necessarily know it's going to be like 10 area because it's probably so close. Right, it would only be like 3 by 3 right? Whereas if you're off 15 feet, the photo is going to be a 10 by 10 square or a little bit larger. So you, by default, kind of know your detection range from there. So you can too close. Right. You might have a number of 10 by 10. Which obviously the guys watching this, they're in the roofing business, know what he's talking about, about the test square 10 by 10 is what the what the insurance, most insurance companies use as as your test per slope, right? Um, so anybody watching this that's not really knowledgeable about roofing, that's what we're talking about in the test square. So being in too close gives the perspective of being inside, much inside of that test square, which ultimately, not, not that it's null and void, but ultimately we want to give a full perspective, like if we're going to be presenting this to a, a, an insurance company, we want to make sure that we're in the parameters of a 10 foot by 10 foot square, which is what they're going to be using anyways. So. And from here, you just upload the four photos that you might have And they'll give you thumbnails of them. Yeah, we're all here. So. Okay, okay. Uh, and then just hit finish. And it will upload them. You can do it over Wi Fi, cell signal, whatever you like to do. The form is successfully created. In a few minutes, we'll get an email uh, and it will have the report in a PDF file format. And it will have the front of the home. We'll have it overhead because we're going to have one of it, and then it'll have the analysis of the uh, four photos of the input. And we'll, uh, we'll wait a second for that to come through. All right, well, just in case it is a few minutes, I'm not going to bore you with having to wait. Let's uh, click this off and jump back in when we have a report, and we'll show you kind of what that looks like. All right, so Ryan, something that you mentioned while we were waiting on the AI to do its magic is that um, it's not just through email, you can actually do it through the app so that you're not having to get a whole bunch of inundated with emails. I mean, I know myself, I probably get 50 emails a day and I'm just like, over it. So you can actually do this in the app and not have the email. Right, and so instead of checking the email, we're actually gonna use the app to view the report that we just ran. So to view the report that we just ran, and it's been two minutes, 45 seconds-ish, uh, since we got the alert that it was uh, completed, you just highlight what you wanted to click or what report you wanted and just click on it. Now it will download a report in the upper right corner as you see, or you can view it on your cell phone. Since we're on a computer, the view isn't an option. So we will just open the file in Adobe PDF. This report is fully customizable. As you can see, we have the default roof hawk uh, one on here. This can be also customized to have your roofing company's logo and have roof hawk not mentioned on, uh, on the cover page as well. Now we uploaded a front of home photo. So there's the front of the property. And as you can see below, now we've got the hits. Now on this particular slope, there's 46 hits obviously pretty severe damage overall, but there's also zoomed up close-ups of the top 10 hits uh, or ever the top amount up to 10. And as you can see, those are pretty decent hail strikes in that one. So we'll go to the next of the four photos. And in this one, you've got 52 hits. Uh, and again, if you look at the close-up detections, these zoomed in detections, uh, those are pretty decent hail strikes there as well. And then we'll go to photo three. 
Uh, 43 hits, so a little bit less damage um, than the other slopes. But again, the zoomed in photo is pretty decent uh, hail hits there. In photo four, uh, you've got a lot of damage as well, but you've also, if you notice, that marked up here on the actual vents as well. So it will detect metal damage, it will detect it on clay tile, asphalt singles, three tab, any kind of, of material uh, that we have trained it on, it will work. Uh, if for whatever reason there's something that needs improvement, we always like having feedback from roofers and we'll be more than happy to add that. But this one also so, had pretty good. Real tailors. quick, one, one thing that I noticed is that some of these some of these uh, uh, notations or marks are, are larger and smaller. So what is, how is the computer, is, is that the size of hail or is that just the area that, that, they're, that they're showcasing or how does that work? So it's trying to get a box around the hail. Uh, and so a smaller box would mean a smaller okay. hail hit. Uh, sometimes- mm -hmm. it, I mean, it makes it, sense. I just, I, I wanted to make sure that that was going on. So when people look at these reports, they're not, they're not having those questions kind of what the same thing is. Yeah, so this one here was a larger hail strike than this one here. Uh, but the reason we bring in the top 10 hits is because if you have a highly damaged roof, you're gonna have these boxes all over the place. And it's really gonna have a problem from a homeowner perspective or insurance company perspective, zooming in and saying, well, let me look at this hit. This is just a much easier way of pulling out the, the top 10. You can see pretty clearly there's hail and, and you can go from there on your, on your way. Okay. Okay. Well, for anybody, for any contractors that are considering adding this to their arsenal of, 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 uh, of reporting, how would they go about doing that? What would the, what's the process? Can reach out to you, reach out to your partner, Craig, or, or yeah, just fill us in on that. They can go uh, to roofhawk.ai and uh, fill up the contact form. They can uh, email us at info at roofhawk.ai as well, or uh, call us the numbers on the, on the website as well. Any way they want to reach out, we're on social media as well. So they can reach out anyway. And it's a it's a pretty powerful sales tool for them. So we're happy to, to bring this to the roofing community. I like it. So real quick, um, the types of drones that you need. I, th I know that most of the, the, the Mavics and the GoPros are gonna be most of the go-tos that are used by people in my industry. Is that pretty pretty consistent with what you guys need? It's pretty consistent. The one thing I would say is uh, the minimum resolution of the camera. You can use really any drone you want. We built the system to use any drone, any type of, of camera device that you can think of. But the baseline is really about 12 megapixel. If you get below that, it's a little bit of a problem sometimes, and but 12 megapixel and above, even if you go to the super yeah. high-end drones, 48 megapixel, 100 megapixel, that'll all work just fine. Nice, nice. All right, guys, we heard it. Roofhawk AI, if you're interested, check it out. I gave you the information, and we'll see you on the next roof.